Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, keep sharing. Please continue to interact with our content and we'll keep appreciating your support. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. Just drop the name or the link down below and we'll be more than glad to react to whatever you suggest. Just give us time, we'll get there. And yeah, check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content that we actually put out. So today, I'm going to be reacting to how Iblis became Satan, birth of the devil. So without wasting time, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. How this all started is a really interesting story. How, how did we get here? I mean, this story that happened, this primal story, is still going on. It's still being played out again and again. And it's in Surah Al-Araf here. The story is a story about two creatures, Adam and Iblis. The dominant opinion is that he was a jinn, but he was allowed into the court of the angels, this angelic court. Now, these angels were told by God to bow down to Adam. And that sujood is not a prostration. It's not actually putting your head on the ground. It was a type of ta'zim, which was more like an inhina. It was bowing. So, Iblis is told to bow down. All of them did it, except Iblis. What has hindered you from not falling prostrate. Id amartuka, because I told you to do this. Qara ana khayru minhu. I'm better than him, which is a very interesting statement because some of the ulama say this is the first wrong action ever. And it's a belief of superiority. It's a belief of superiority of another creature. So he said, I'm better than him. And then, خَرَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارِ Then he gives the reason, this is his logic of why he is superior. You created me from fire, وَخَرَقْتُهُ مِنْ طِينَ And you created him from earth and water. I'm fire and air, he's earth and water. I'm better than him. What was the superiority here? What superiority did he see? Material, right? It's, it's medda. He's looking at the actual substance of what we are made of. Now, what is unique about Iblis and Adam? Both Iblis and Adam, they have this conscious ruah. They have this conscious knowledge of God that other creatures don't have, whether they're made of fire, earth, water, whatever they're made of. So. Iblis was looking at the outward of the situation and he's saying, I'm better than him. Why are you making me bow down to somebody that I'm better than? This is his logic. And there's a lot of people that fall into that type of reasoning in the world and it causes immense problems in the world. Then go down. Now this is a command to him, Minha Famayakunudeka and Tatakabbar fiha. It is not for thee to show pride here. In other words, you're in the divine presence. This isn't the place for pride. If you're aware of God, you can't be in a state of pride. And therefore he was cast out of this presence. Because the two can't go together. And then he says, Fakhruj inna kamina sagirin. Get out of here because you are the Sagir. You're not better, you're worse. You're the humiliated one. Because of your pride. Because of your pride, you've put yourself under the thing that you thought you were over. So the actual thinking that you were over this other creature has put you under that creature by default. So go out. 
His kufr is called kufr al isyan It's the disbelief of disobedience. And then he says, قَالَ أَنظُرْنِي أَنظُرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Give me some reprieve. قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنظَرِينَ You've got this reprieve. قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي This is really key here. بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Now, because you led me astray. Right, so he's blaming, now he blames Allah. This is the beauty of Iblis. Look at this foolish intellect. First, he says, why didn't you do it? And he says, because I can't do that, I'm better than him. Then he says, you made me go astray by telling me to do it in the first place. Because I couldn't do it, you said do it. And, and so it's your fault. It's not my fault, it's your fault. See, that's, he's blaming God for his problems. I will now lurk in ambush for them. In other words, these humans. Because you told me to do this thing. So it's both of your faults. You told me to do something that I couldn't do. And the reason I couldn't do it is because he wasn't worthy of it. So he's got two he, he's got two adver adversaries here. He's angry at God and he's angry at Adam. And then he says, And I will come upon them from before them, and behind them, and to their rights, and to their lefts, and you will not find most of them uh, filled with gratitude. So this is, this is important too because what Iblis has set out to do now is show that they're ingrates. That's what he wants to do. He wants to show God that you made a mistake, you shouldn't have made him the Khalifa, the Caliph on earth, and you're going to see that they're, they're not going to be grateful for what you've given them in the first place. And so it's very interesting this story because what it's telling us is that if you place God in his right, position and you place yourself in your right position which is that you see God over you and you're under in prostration in this state of submission shaitan has no access when does shaitan flee according to the hadith when you're in sajda he, because he can't bear that humility before God and then Allah again qala khuruj minha madhuman madhura he banished him again degraded banished and then he says that whoever follows you, uh, I'm going to fill Jahannam with them. Those people that follow you, they, you're their Imam. And you're headed to that place, so he, you're going to take them with you. So if you take him as an Imam, that's where he's taking you. So Allah gave him the ability to go into our bodies and play with our minds, to be able to so inconspicuously sound in our mind as if it is our own deep thoughts but it is actually shaitan saying his worst and evil evil words into our mind whispering into our ears and then shaitan said an interesting video i'm just wondering um god knows our past present and future i'm just wondering as to why he didn't stop this the act of Iblis to take place, you know, or in fact, just the creation of Iblis, why not not create him so that um, the world is made simpler? Why not let, why not create Satan that's only going to deceive Adam and Eve into eating the fruit so that everyone is just happy? I'm just wondering as to why God would let these events happen. Not bowing down to Adam because of jealousy or whatever it is. I'm not even sure. Eating from the forbid eating the forbidden fruit and the rest of the world is punished or sent to live in a world that's just impossible to survive. It's it's just insane to even think about how jealousy is not a product of today's world but it started from um, <clears throat> when the world was being created you know 
like way back into the past that it's I, I, I really wonder why why let such a thing happen by God and also a bliss why have such a heart to the extent that you don't want to bow to God's creation but you recognize this as this is God so why not listen to God who also created you those are some of the things I would love to um, know otherwise this like I said was interesting and I feel like it was self explanatory to, the, to some point it just made me ask questions as I watched. So what's the logical thing that we should pick up from this? Or what was God trying to send? What message was God trying to send by allowing these events to happen, you know? Uh, let me know what you think. If there's anything you want me to react to, drop the name or the link down below. I'll be more than glad to react to them. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.